What do you do in 1991 when you're a high-flying businessman calling the shots in power plays and taking over industry and you need some sort of mobile device, you need some sort of laptop to take with you to conduct all your business on? Well, you'd get yourself one of these. It's a PowerBook 170 from 1991 and we're going to have a look at it today. Welcome to the basement. So before we get started, I just want to shout out to our current sponsor, PCBWay. Let me just pull up their website. PCBWay is the most reliable place to get PCBs. You can get advanced PCBs, you can even get them to assemble them for you. So it's so good for prototyping or any low run production. Now they also offer CNC machining and 3D printing. So you can get the cases made, and you can get all your prototyping needs developed by them in-house. They provide instant quotes so you know exactly what you're up for and they even give you expert feedback. So they look through your design and they give you feedback to make sure that everything's going to work great. There's no minimum requirement, there's fair and transparent pricing and there's 24 hours customer service. So they really are the best solution for all of your PCB needs. Right, back to the video. So the reason I was saying a high profile businessman would be buying one of these is because of the price back in 1991. This particular machine was 4,600 US dollars, which is around about 13,000 Australian dollars. Now I know that's a fair chunk of change, but the machine that this is replacing is the Macintosh Portable, which was listed at 6,500 US dollars. And this is a far superior machine. So you're already saving almost 2,000 US dollars and you're getting a much better machine. So let's see what we get for our 4,600 US dollars. So first things first, we have this sleek design. Now, I know it's kind of chunky today, but compared to the Macintosh Portable, this thing was tiny. And this actually pioneered the design of the keyboard at the back of the computer and our trackball, or what we have nowadays, a trackpad at the front of the computer. So this is really the forerunner of the current ergonomic design we have for, for laptops today. Now, as far as ports go, this thing was fairly well equipped for its time. So starting from over here, we have our power jack to power the laptop and to charge the battery. We have our SCSI port for external hard drives and other SCSI devices you might need to plug in there. We have our ADB port here for hooking up any keyboards or mice. We have our microphone in, we have our speaker out, we have two serial ports, and then we have uh, a reset and an interrupt um, button. And we have, of course, our power button. Now, looking at the right-hand side of the laptop, we have our three and a half inch floppy drive and of course one of the feet which flip down like this to elevate the computer and to give you a more ergonomic typing platform. On the other side we have the other foot and a slightly crusty looking battery which we're going to get out of this machine today. Now specification for this machine it was no slouch it had a 25 megahertz 68030 processor had the additional floating point unit and it could be spec'd up to eight megabytes of RAM, came standard with four. Now the display on the device is a 9.8 inch, 640 by 400 resolution active matrix display. So it was really clear and crisp black and white images. Now you may have noticed some immediate problems with this machine. Yes, it is missing its trackball and it's missing the ring that holds the trackball in. The other issue it's got um, just cosmetically is it's missing the flap on the back of the laptop, which is pretty common. It's pretty rare to find these now with the flap actually attached. Now this machine is fully working, but it has one more issue that's not immediately apparent until we fire it up. So why don't we get some power to it, turn it on, and I'll show you what I mean. So we'll plug that in. Okay, that's power to the machine. Let's turn it on. I'm not sure why it does that, but it seems to boot up normally after it does that. So here we have it, it's booted into the desktop fine. The hard drive is really noisy, um, so that's a candidate for replacement. But for now it seems to be working fine. Now the issue I have on this machine is called tunnel vision. And what that means is the screen starts to get darker and darker, starting from the corners and working its way in, until all you can see is sort of a, a circle in the middle uh, that's still lit up. Now nobody really knows why it does this, but the current theory is that there's moisture that's got its way into the liquid crystal of the display. So when current's applied to make it light or dark, um, it's shorting out somehow and it's just staying dark. And that just increases um, the longer it's on, it just gets worse and worse. Now I can turn it off for a while and turn it on and the screen's fine. It only does it after it's been on for a little while. 
However, I have recently seen a video that's just been posted on YouTube of someone claiming a much easier fix. And so we're gonna try that today. So while I wait for the screen to start its tunnel vision effect to show you what I mean, I'm gonna fix the mouse ball and remove the old battery. Let's get started. Okay, the rollers are nice and clean, ready for a new ball. You're not seeing double. Um, I have found one of my parts laptops. It's a PowerBook 145B and the case is almost identical to the 170, even though this is two years newer. But for today, it's gonna to make a good trackball replacement. So let's get the trackball out of here and get it into this machine here. Let's pop it back in. So now we've got a working mouse ball and you can see the mouse moving around quite nicely there on the screen doing its thing. Now the other thing of course we can see on the screen is the beginning of the tunnel vision. So these corners are getting quite dark and the longer I leave it on, the worse it's gonna get. Okay, here's the crusty battery. We wanna get this out of here. I can see that there's already signs of it leaking. There's crystals and things here and we definitely don't want that inside this machine causing any damage. Now it's, it's quite jammed in there, probably because it's swollen over time. So let's just see if we can wedge it open. Oh, it doesn't want to come easy, but I think it's starting to move. There we go. It's really stuck in there. Let's get this thing out. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. Far out. This thing is toast. Um, we actually might want to take this machine apart and give it a clean inside because uh, there's so much leakage on this thing. Um, I dare say that there is much more inside the machine. That's definitely one of the jobs we're going to get done today. Let's just have another look at our screen and you can see that problem is getting worse. What we're going to do now is shut the machine down. I'm going to take this bezel housing off and I'm going to show you the fix that I saw on the internet and we'll find out together if it actually will work. Okay, let's get started pulling it apart. So it's a Torx T8. There's two screws just at the bottom of the display. So these two screws hold the bezel on. There's just clips around the outside. And if we carefully just use a little spudger, we can pop that bezel off. And that's great. We haven't broken any of the clips, which is excellent. You have to be a little careful now with the machine because the screws are one of the two in each of these hinges. So all of that pressure now is just on one screw there on each side. So what I like to do is just sit the machine on its side and that way the strain's taken off these two screws and we can remove the rest of the screen here. Okay, we'll just undo this plug here and we'll undo the monitor cable here and the screen comes out. There we have it. Okay, just as I suspected on the plastic housing for the display, the mounting points here have broken. So that's the uh, right hand side here, that's just broken right off. The other side is just about to go. And here we've got a few cracks starting on this one. This one looks okay, but we're gonna strengthen them all up anyway and we'll get these ones fixed. So I've just mixed up some two part quick set epoxy here just for added peace of mind. So the epoxy's on there and that plus the glue, these points are gonna be strong enough into the foreseeable future. So I just thought I'd show you the epoxy I used. It's actually a construction grade epoxy designed to hold bolts in concrete. And about five minutes after it's gone off, you can see this thing is rock hard. So it's gonna make that laptop nice and strong. Okay, so here we have that screen with that tunnel vision problem. Now, up until now, the only fix that has sort of worked and not even uh, that reliably is baking these things in an oven so that you try and drive the moisture out. But the video I saw recently claims that if you tighten all of these points around the board, it actually fixes the problem. Now, if that's true, that's quite a revelation because there's a lot of people in the same position as me with a classic Mac with this tunnel vision problem. I've got my doubts, but it doesn't hurt to try. We can always just tweak these up and tighten the motherboard against the LCD screen and we'll see if it fixes that problem. So that's all of these points tightened. So according to that method, that means that this screen should be fixed and not have any more tunnel vision. I guess there's only one way to find out and that is to put it back in and turn it on. 
Okay, let's continue to disassemble the body of the machine and clean up all of that battery leakage. Now, when I was pulling it apart, one of the screws didn't come out and sure enough, the metal insert here is stuck on the screw still. It's just pulled right out of the plastic in the housing. So this is our two megabytes of RAM and we've got another two megabytes on a removable stick here. I'd like to get a six megabyte version of this. They're probably quite rare, but I'm sure I'll find one if I look hard enough. So that's the drive modules removed and you can see how brittle all of these standoffs are. I mean, they're just falling apart. So I'm gonna have quite a large repair job on my hands. There's just bits of plastic everywhere in here, but a bit of glue, a bit of epoxy and the job will be done. So you can see the batteries cause quite a bit of damage here. This aluminium, which is shielding here on the stuck to the inside of the plastic, that's just flaking away. That's just almost down to nothing. Um, so I'm actually surprised this laptop was still running. There's so much corrosion going on inside, but a uh, fair bit of cleaning. So I'm just gonna get stuck in, get this cleaned and we'll come back with a nice clean laptop and hopefully with all those standoffs fixed. Okay, we're back. And I've spent quite a bit of time cleaning everything thoroughly, disassembling everything. Um, you'll see this pile here. This is all of the broken plastic from the standoffs. As I was pulling it apart, these things were just crumbling off. So um, I've gone through and fixed every single standoff. So as you can see here, I've rebuilt most of them. Some of them were actually completely missing and I've had to rebuild the entire thing. And some of them still had the plastic and so I've strengthened around the outside because the ones that still had plastic there, they were all cracked as well. Okay, here's the, uh, the top half which I've assembled earlier. And we're just gonna plug it into the bottom half here. Okay, let's open it up, turn it on. Still got that weird pattern at startup, I'm not sure what that's about. We'll just let it sit here and run for about 15, 20 minutes and uh, we'll see if it still does that same tunnel vision problem. So I'm back and I've had the machine running for about 40 minutes. I'm gonna turn it around in a second and we'll see if that simple fix worked. Are you ready? No, it didn't. So I can't say that I'm surprised I was pretty skeptical on this one going into it. This has been an ongoing problem for a long time on these Macs. And for someone just to pop up and say, hey, look, I've fixed it. And uh, with such an easy method, yeah, I never really thought it would work, but it was worth a try. And so in doing so and pulling the machine apart, we also got to fix all of that leaky battery corrosion that was happening and fix all of those broken standoffs. So the machine's better than when we started, but it still needs the screen fixed. So the next step will be um, removing the screen again and we're gonna bake it in an oven and see if that works. So stay tuned, that'll be an upcoming video. But for now, you've been in the basement. Have a great day.